Okay, in this tutorial, we are going to take a look at the parameters of a 7-band EQ. Um, and what we're going to do is look at a snare drum track and apply right away. Uh, first of all, I want to make mention that I do have a, um, a drum groove here and have just a, a one-bar loop. And we can solo that snare drum be able to take a look. All right, so again, this tutorial is really just to describe the parameters of the EQ and how you might manipulate them for this snare drum, though um, every instrument is going to be um, a little bit different as far as how you actually uh, manipulate the EQ. But we're going to go ahead and, ap and apply the basic EQ that comes with Pro Tools, the EQ3 7-band. Now, the reason they call it a 7-band EQ is because you have seven spaces or seven things that you can do um, with this particular instrument or this sound. So you have a HPF, high pass filter, uh, LPF, low pass filter, and then five individual peaking EQs. So you have low frequency, low mid, mid, high mid, and high frequency. That gives you the seven band EQ. So if we dive right in here, the first thing that we might look at is the high pass filter. Now there's an in button on every band of this uh, EQ. So if we apply and turn the in button on on the high pass filter, right away we'll start to see a little bit of filtering happen. As we increase the frequency, you'll see we end up filtering everything below the, the frequency setting we have, in this case 2.5K. We also have the option of adjusting the slope, which is which is ultimately the um, how, how uh, tapered the the filter actually is. So the 6 dB per octave is a fairly smooth slope and as we increase to maybe 12 dB or 18 dB or 24 dB even, you can see how much more harsh or um, uh, definitely much more cut or dr drastic cut there is on the 24 dB versus the 6 dB. So if I hit play here on our snare drum track, you'll hear of course definitely thins out the snare drum sound because everything below 870 hertz is being affected. You can hear as I adjust the slope, it's even more dramatic in that cut. So with this 24 dB per octave, I could kind of find that point in time where I am really not affecting the snare sound. too thin right there, so let's back it back down to maybe 100 hertz or so. And then we might even adjust the slope back to a more gentle slope out 12 or 6 dB. So this is a little bit more musical, a little bit more natural sounding filter. So we can reduce some of the, the bleed there. Now, alternately, we could do the same sort of thing on the high end, though you, you often find you want to try to keep that high end fidelity of a lot of sounds, but you certainly can do the same thing. But you'll notice if we try to take out the hi-hat bleed, it definitely affects the attack and the transient of the actual snare drum sound. But, you know, doing something like this will give you that kind of filtered telephone effect sort of sound. So you have some options there, some creative things that you can do with the high and low pass filter. So let's keep this thing um, out for right now. We won't utilize that. So you have the... Um, the low frequency and the high frequency, I wanted to point out there's actually the option of choosing between a, sh a low shelf and a, and a normal peaking low end, and same thing for the high end. You can have a high shelf or a standard peaking EQ. So if we go to the high frequency and choose shelf, you have gain and frequency, and the Q adjustment affects the slope of the shelf. If I were to switch over to peaking, you'll see that I get gain, frequency, and then Q is your standard bandwidth adjustment. So if I keep it on a high shelf, you'll notice that everything above 33.5K is being boosted by 5.5 dB. So that includes any hi-hat bleed. So we hear not only the snare drum get brighter, but the hi-hat gets brighter as well. So instead, we might adjust this just to a peaking EQ and maybe try to filter in or find just the end of the snare, which is, in this case, right about 7K. Now, that's quite a bit of boost right now at 5.5, so I'm going to drop that down just a little bit. It's not overly bright. So it's a 
a little snap to the snare drum and the goose. Now this snare drum has a lot of ring in it. Uh, it doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, ultimately that snare ring would, would kind of be covered up once you get the rest of the drum kit in there. But if it's just bothering you and you want to try to remove it, you have a couple different methods. Now there's kind of the common method of finding that ring sound would be a search and destroy sort of method where you crank the gain up, you tighten up the cue, and then you sweep the frequency until you find the ring. So right about in there. So then we would take the gain and drop it down. Now there might be more ring involved. Uh, there might be harmonics of that ring, one lower or a couple higher. So in that case, we might go to a different frequency or a different band and do the same thing. So you can see we're doing some pretty major surgery on this thing. And, and we want to be careful not to uh, reduce the gain too much or you really start to make the snare drum sound very unnatural. So um, again, it's kind of up to you whether or not you decide to, to want to reduce the ring out of a snare, but you can see the process. Another method of trying to find a frequency on this particular EQ is to hold shift and control down. And when you adjust the frequency, it switches over to like just a filtered version of just that one band. And you can find the frequency that way and then adjust the gain accordingly. So again, I hold, hold the shift and the control key to, to make that happen. Now something else we want, might, might want to do is actually add a little bit of a kind of punch or, or, or bottom end to this snare drum sound. And so what we'll do is maybe go around the 100 anywhere from 100 to 200 hertz, and see what that sounds like. If I go a little over dramatic with it. Right about in there is kind of the meat of the snare drum sound, so let's add a little bit of that. Maybe we'll bring this filter frequency down a little bit. There we go, so let me bypass this snare sound, or this EQ. So here's before. After. So you know it's not dramatic. I'm adding you know really very little bit. Um, 5 dB is, is 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 actually fairly hefty for that low end. Um, adding the 3 dB on the high end, and then taking out some of the mid mid range register. So again, this is not you know an EQ that you would always default to on a snare drum sound but uh, certainly is uh, useful to know um, all the various parameters that you have and all the options that you have with, a, with the seven band EQ.